Otto Wallin says that he's willing to fight Deontay Wilder if a rematch with Tyson Fury doesn't materialize for him. He said, quote, It would be great if I could get that fight. I've been thinking about it and studying it since the last one happened. If I would have had those cuts, they would have stopped the fight. I don't want to be bitter about that, but I think I deserve the rematch. You know, Fury calls out everybody. In one interview, I heard him mention about 10 different names, but I never hear my name at all. I don't know what's going on with that. I gave him his toughest fight. They know that I'm a tough guy. I proved that I could hurt him. I hurt him a few different times. I cut him. That's not very good news for him. End quote. His promoter, Dimitri Salita, then said, quote, numbers don't lie. Otto landed more punches against Tyson Fury in one fight than Klitschko and Wilder combined. If there is anyone in the world that has a chance to beat Tyson Fury, the man is Otto Wallen. We feel that Otto is the best heavyweight in the world, end quote. And then Wallen said again, quote, I'm better, excuse me, I'm in a better place than I was before the last fight. The experience is very good for me, having gone 12 rounds with him, because now I can see how to improve. One thing I can do is pace myself better. My first six rounds were good, but from rounds 7 to 11, he won those rounds. There's a lot I can take from that fight. I had no respect for him. I think a lot of guys go in there and show him too much respect. I just went in there and tried to leave everything in the ring. I think once Fury gets comfortable, he starts dancing and having his hands behind his back and everything. With Fury, you have to make it a fight and not let him get set and comfortable because then he's going to outbox you. I think all of those fights are good for Fury and he's reacting to the uh, news that Carlos Takam and Caballero are the front runners. So he said, I think all those fights are good for Fury. I think the other guys don't have the fast feet that I do. You need that. You need to be able to be aggressive and have fast feet because he's got very good feet and he's going to move a lot. If you can do that, it's going to be tough. Uh, Wilder is with PBC and I'm with Showtime so we can make that happen. But I did better with Fury than Wilder so I don't know uh, that he wants that, end quote. So some interesting comments there by Otto Waller. Now, he's obviously going to talk himself up because not only does he want another crack at trying to beat Fury, but he also wants a nice payday and his promoter is going to do the same thing. But he did make some valid points, I think. He said that against Fury and not just against Fury, against any high level fighter, you can't show them too much respect. You have to be aware of what they can do. Don't get it twisted. You can't go in there thinking this guy is no good at all and I've got absolutely nothing to worry about. No, that's the wrong attitude as well. But you need to go in there and be the boss. You need to go in there with a boss's mindset, not be intimidated, not be overawed, not be worried about what the other guy's going to do too much because then you're going to allow him to get his shots off uh, before you get yours off and you're going to allow him to dictate the action and take control of what's going on in the ring. You don't want to do that. You want to impose your will on him, irrespective of who he is. And that's what Otto Wallen said that he tried to do and he did have some success with in that first Tyson Fury fight. Did manage to land that good left hand on Fury's eye and cut him. Now, as far as how he might do in a rematch, well, Tyson Fury looked an awful lot better against Deontay Wilder than he looked against Wallen. And I don't think it was just because Wilder has more technical deficiencies than Wallen, even though he's a tremendous puncher and Wallen's a southpaw. So there's that added dimension of, you know, Wallen being awkward, being a southpaw. I also think it was the fact that Tyson Fury just performed to a higher level against uh, Deontay Wilder. He had more energy. He had more strength. His dad was absolutely right. I think most of us, including David Hay and, you know, a lot of the public, were concerned that Tyson Fury came in so heavy against uh, Deontay Wilder in the second fight because even his previous trainer, Ben Davison, was concerned that Tyson Fury had come in so heavy. We all assumed Tyson Fury was going to box again. We didn't believe, and I'm saying we as in most of us. Of course, there were some hardcore Tyson Fury fans who believe everything Fury says. 
whether he's telling the truth or whether he's lying. They just believe it anyway, <laughs> by default. <laughs> so if, if you do that, then eventually you're going to be right because some of the things Tyson Fury says are true and some of the things he says are not true. So they don't use any discernment at all. They just believe everything right across the board in terms of what Tyson Fury says. So yeah, some of those people were right when they said, oh yeah, Fury's going to come in heavy and he's going to push Wilder back because they're just agreeing with whatever Fury says. Uh, but those of us who are, are you know, <laughs> who have more of an intellectual process than that, including Ben Davis and David Hay, many other people, we, we were wondering whether Fury was just playing mind games when he said he was going to go in there and attack Deontay Wilder and take the fight to him. But of course, he wasn't playing mind games. And that's the thing about Fury. He's a very smart guy. Both him and his dad are smart. And there are different forms of intelligence. Of course, the Furies are not rocket scientists or anything like that. But that's only one form of intelligence. The Furies are intelligent in terms of street smarts. The Furies are intelligent in terms of understanding human psychology, particularly as it pertains to boxing. The pair of them, is it is it too much to call them geniuses? They're not far off when it comes to understanding the psychology of fighters. And because of that, Fury is definitely one of the more difficult fighters to read. <laughs> he is. I'm just being real. I'm somebody that's good at reading human psychology. Because Fury is smart and he also is good at reading human psychology, it's difficult to read and, and know whether he's being serious or whether he's messing around, whether it's missed. Because him and his dad, they play so many games with people. You just don't know. So he threw a lot of people off. And I think that if the Tyson Fury who fought Deontay Wilder went in there against Otto Wallen, Wallen would probably have a rude awakening. <laughs> now, don't, don't get it twisted. I think Wallen could still have success against Fury, even if he performed the way he did against Wilder. Uh, because again, styles make fights. Wallen is less wild than Wilder. He's got better balance. He's got, he's a southpaw. He can do certain things that Wilder can't do from a technical point of view. But at the same time, I think the Fury who fought Wilder the second time had more power in his punches. He was more forceful. Would that play into Wallen's hands? Maybe. But if he can maintain the distance that he maintained against Wilder against, uh, you know, Wallen in a rematch, again, I think he could do some serious damage in there against Otto Wallen. So look, I'm not blaming Wallen for trying to get himself a rematch. I'm not blaming him for being confident. You're supposed to do that as a fighter. And you have to expect fighters to do that. But I don't know. I wouldn't be picking him in the rematch. Let's just put it that way. And I don't think that Wallen has the best chance in the heavyweight division of beating Tyson Fury at all. I definitely don't agree with that. I think AJ's got a better chance of beating him. And there might be one or two others. Michael Hunter, I think, have got a better chance of beating Fury. Uh, Usek as well than Otto Wallen does. But nonetheless, Wallen's going to say what he says. As far as Wallen against Wilder, I mean, that's a fight I like. He said there that he's with Showtime, Wilder's with PBC. Get it done. If Wilder's not going to fight Fury and he's looking to come back and get himself in contention, I think Otto Wallen might actually be the perfect opponent because Wallen is going to come to fight. He's not coming to lay down and just get a payday. He's got heart as we saw there in the Fury fight. And if Deontay Wilder is ever going to get back into heavyweight contention, he has to be able to get through the likes of an Otto Wallen. He saw Tyson Fury get through him. You know, Wallen is a decent, you know, fringe contender at the moment. And, you know, he's not such a soft touch that you're just sighing if Deontay Wilder signs to fight him. Um, but he's not so formidable that you'd be thinking this is a bit too risky after Wilder's, you know, coming back from defeat against Tyson Fury. Again, Wilder could go in there and lose to Wallen. It's, it's certainly not beyond the realms of possibility. But Wilder is best if you think back to how he performed in the first Ortiz fight against Dominic Brazil, um, against uh, who? Yoan Duopa, if you uh, against Stavern in a rematch, even the first fight. If you think back to Wilder is best, he should be able to beat a guy like Wallen. 
In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Wallen was the kind of fighter they were actually lining up to fight Deontay Wilder in one of his voluntary defenses. Wallen might give Wilder issues, but he should be able to get through him. And if he is able to come through a competitive fight against Wallen and maybe get a late stoppage, that might do Deontay Wilder the world of good. Because a lot of these early knockouts and these, uh, you know, the, these knockouts like he had against Ortiz in the rematch where he didn't really exert himself in the fight. He was behind on points because he wasn't throwing any punches, but he wasn't really taking many punches either, just moving around the ring looking for the opportunity to land the right hand. Those fights are not really going to do much for him. They boosted his ego and he got totally carried away with himself and started believing his own hype and allowing his fans to gas his head up with the Dominic Brazil fight, the Ortiz rematch, etc. He really needs to be brought back to reality. You know, he, he needs to live in the real world and his rehabilitation needs to be in the real world. So what I'm trying to say is there's no point giving him a bunch of knockover jobs at this stage. I mean, at most he should have one who's a total knockover job. But after that, he needs to fight somebody who, yes, he's going to be the favorite over, but they should be able to put up some resistance and give him some issues because that's how he's going to build his character back. That's how he's going to build true confidence, knowing that he can come through a competitive fight and win. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Otto Wallin pursuing a rematch of Tyson Fury, but if he don't get it, he's calling out Deontay Wilder. Personally, I think it's a, a good fight for Wilder in terms of a comeback fight. And yeah, there's risk. Maybe it's what, considering Wilder's coming back from potentially an injury and a stoppage defeat and a layoff and his confidence is shattered. Is it 60-40 in favor of Wilder, this fight? So he could lose. But I think given what Wilder may want to still achieve, if he really does at some point regain his hunger and wants to make another go of it, becoming heavyweight champion, then this is the kind of risk you're going to have to take to get there, in my view. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm out.